All right, everyone, welcome back to another Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes video with Fat Phil. And today, we're going to be ranking every single game mode inside of Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. I'm extremely excited for this. I've been working on this over the past few days, kind of trying to put them in tiers that make sense. So again, we'll go over the criteria for each, you know, for how I'm ranking these things, and then kind of, you know, break down a few of them, uh, you know, break them down into enough detail that you can kind of understand where the importance of game modes lies. Again, at least from my perspective. Before we get into that, Please make sure that you like, subscribe, comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. Let's give a massive shout out to the channel members for continuing to support this channel through thick and thin. Again, guys, thank you so much. Um, if you're ever interested, again, joining those links down below. Anytime I say links down below, links down below. If they're not there, yell at me in the YouTube comments and I'll make sure that those links get updated. Thank you guys again. I very much appreciate all of you. Let's talk about game modes here. So... We're actually going to go over to a Google Sheet. Again, that will be linked down below. We're going to talk about the criteria first. So I kind of listed out three different criteria here for how these, uh, you know, how I view these things, right? So let's start with the total quality of rewards. From top to bottom, what is the game mode? What is the event offering as rewards? Now, I'm using game mode and event because some things they call events, other things I'm going to refer to as game modes. Just you'll see what they are. Like the, it's it's your like special events and things. Um Again, quality of rewards top to bottom. You can't just look at the top thing and say, hey, these are really good. What's the rest of the body of the work? Next is the frequency. An event that is less frequent with lesser rewards can sometimes be the equivalent of a really good re event that isn't nearly as often. Think of one territory war to one territory battle. Everybody would take a territory battle, but you get two territory war reward, you know, two territory wars for every TB. So those rewards, you kind of have to look at them from that perspective there, right? How frequent are they? And then finally, what's the rarity of the rewards? And by rarity, what I'm really referring to here is that like I view gear as the least rare kind of reward that you just you get gear. All right, big deal. Next is currency. And I value currency more than I value gear because randomized gear, again, it's random. So it could give you something that you don't need. Think about how many times you get a piece of gear that you're like, gosh, I've got like 5,000 of these, but I need other stuff. So that's one thing to keep in mind. And then the next part is that currency isn't as valuable as crystals because again, you're limited with the currency to buy what's in that store. Whereas crystals can buy, I think everything in the game is potentially available with crystals. There's a few things that aren't and you have to use currencies for, but you know, as a whole, I would argue that crystals are the most important form of currency in this game because they're universal. They get you access to everything. So with all those things in mind, Let's get into the rankings, and we're going to start with the laughable tier. The rewards are abysmal for the Omega Battles and Endor Escalation. This is tier two. This is the heroic version that requires Galactic Legend Leia Organa. In my opinion, these things are just, it's trash rewards. They're not good. They are not frequent enough that they make a big difference in your account. Like Omega Battles, when they first released, were a big deal because there wasn't nearly as many omegas in the game it wasn't like now where every single character has an omega at every single point right it you know when they first came into the game it was a big deal that this event was really really important now like i would argue that you could give a zeta every single time this shows up and it still would feel a little bit light on the rewards like it just it's really abysmal they they, they need a complete overhaul these have been around since the dawn of you know omegas and have never changed Endor Escalation Tier 2, I don't need to go into a lot of detail here. I just say the rewards are horrible for the investment. And it's a once a month thing. So yes, like you get two Omicrons, but it's once a month. So it's, you know, a single Omicron every single year from all of that work of getting GL Leia. It's just, I don't know, it's, it's laughable to me, right? There's like, like, oh, you get a little bit of relic materials, but it's randomized and you don't get a lot of them. Like it's, it's, it's bad, right? They're laughable. Next is the Squad Arena Tier. And I love when players say, oh, the rewards are good. Like, these people are morons. Squad Arena has some of the most important rewards in this game. We just don't realize it. I want to switch back over to the game for a second here. So when you go into the Squad Arena store, you look, there's prestige, there's credits, all these characters. But the big stuff is that down in here, you can buy gear pieces that you need. Like, I'm going to buy some of these here. You can buy stuff that you need for relic materials or like this gear piece here to save you from farming it elsewhere. That this stuff over a period of time adds up. I showed in the relic farming guide, if you can buy just like a single piece of like 10 pieces out of here, like you can get, I believe it's, is it 10 or 20 of these? 
let's just call it 10 for the sake of argument. You get 10 of these, you're almost getting a full carbonite circuit board a day. You get 20, you're getting almost two carbonite circuit boards a day. That adds up. That's a lot of gear that you can buy in a short period of time. So to me, it's very important to grab those when you can. And so squad arena to me becomes very important. And I think a lot of players sort of discount it because like, oh, it's not a fun event. But trust me, squad arena here can be really, really important, especially if you want to improve your rewards in small ways, right? Now, in terms of other game modes, yes, there's more important things, but don't think that squad arena isn't important. And that's why it's in its own tier here. All right, next we have the not frequent enough tiers. This is Endor Escalation Tier 1, the Defense of Dathomir, your Galactic Bounties, the Ghosts of Dathomir, and Mythic Events. All of these provide pretty good rewards. You're getting, you know, Zetas, Wicket Shards in here. You're getting Shards for rare characters here. This is the one where you get Night Sister Zombie and Night Sister Spirit Shards. And then the Mythic Tiers are all pretty decent, right? And um, the thing is, they're not often enough. They don't happen that, like, these aren't even once a month. So, it's one of these areas where, yeah, you know what? They can offer some decent rewards, but if because they're not frequent enough, this isn't something where I'm like, go rush your Ewoks to get to Endor Escalation. Go rush your Night Sisters to get to Defense of Dathomir. Like, that's not, and it's not what these are designed for, you know? The same thing with, like, the Mythic, the Mythic tiers. Don't rush your Phoenix to get to the Mythic tier of the Thrawn event whenever you get there. It's not worth the time. It's not worth the resources that go into it. They're, the rewards are very small. They don't really, you know, they're not, it's not a frequent enough thing that you should be really, really focusing on these events. They're nice when they crop up. Like Galactic Pounties, it kind of hurt me to put me to put these here. But I had to look at them in the mirror and say, they're not often enough. This is not something that's happening, you know, Galactic Bounties 1, Galactic Bounties 2, every single month. They're far less frequent than that. So in my opinion... They had to get knocked down in this not frequent enough tier. Next, let's get into the bonus reward tier. And this one I know everybody's about to get super mad at. So we have the Smuggler's Run 1 and 2 here. I only put the Smuggler's Run 2 card, but it's 1 and 2. All of the Assault Battle tiers and the Contraband Cargo event. These are all things that need to be viewed as bonus rewards, especially in the early stages of the game. They're bonus tier rewards i know everybody's always like oh no you got to get to assault battles because they're, they're, they're so good it takes so long to see the benefit of those rewards it takes so long to see the benefit of getting your the chirotex back the signal data the relic materials it takes a long time so it's not something that i would necessarily say that you go and rush right into they should be something that hey you've built this imperial trooper team now you get to reap the rewards because you built them for grand arena you know hey you're Commander Luke team or whatever team that you've built can now do this. Here's your reward in Kyrotech and signal data. That's the way I view assault battles. And I think that's the most important thing that you can think of. It's bonuses. Now, as you progress in this game, this tier increases in significance because your assault battles, you got to think early on, you're not going to compete, you know, complete every single assault battle. So you're getting like one, maybe two assault battles where you're earning those rewards a month. Like that's, it's bonus. As you get later and later, you think of you know a player like myself where I have all but one of those completed, it takes a little bit more time to get there, right? So just take all that with a grain of salt. I think that Assault Battles definitely belong in this bonus tier. Um, Smuggler's Run 2, again, bonus because you built Jabba. Like, that's why we love building Jabba is he's this fantastic galactic legend, really good requirements, and you get to the Smuggler's Run 2, which is a very good event happens like multiple times like twice a month you're getting really good mod materials that again just continues to grow with your account again you're not solely building java for smugglers run 2 that's not the only reason it's a big bonus to it but that's not the only reason i have there's you know as you guys see in that farming guide there's reasons why you're building java next you get into the growth tier so these are very important in the early game and as your account be, you know continues to progress through as you grow you know through these events kind of become less and less important and they drop below the bonus reward tier as time goes on. Like you think of your droid events, the training droids for both ships and characters, those become almost meaningless. Like I can't tell you the last time I worried about training droids for either of those things because you just, once you got to think, once you take a character to level 85, there's nothing beyond it. You're done. There's no additional thing that needs to go into it. So those training droids kind of build up over time because 
you don't need more of them. It's the same thing with the credits. And the credits here, it's only like 300,000 credits every time this challenge shows up. So it's not a lot of resources overall. It's a, it's pretty it's pretty bad. It's like a million credits from this a week. Just not anything that is super groundbreaking there. I also threw in the fleet masteries. You know, you think before you get to the, the Zeta challenge and other stuff, you have these events. Um, for Akbar, Tarkin, and Windu, their ships kind of, you know, get replaced by the ship challenges. Again, early on, very important. Then, like, you never play them again. Also in this tier, I've got the ability mat challenge. Again, you just get to a point where you have so many of these that it doesn't matter. Right? Early on, this is very important. This is kind of like driving all of your progression early on. But as you get later in the game, it just, you get enough of these. And then finally, credit heist and the training droid. Again, credit heist, I, I really struggled, but I put it here because I can remember back in the day when, like, you would literally wait all, you know, two weeks to get credit heist. And then your guild chat would just blow up with people getting characters to seven star, higher gear levels, because everybody waited for it. Now... There's so many other ways to get credits that you're not solely dependent on that. Early on, it's a big deal. Later and later you get credits become less of an importance because, and again, I'm going to flip back over to the game here to kind of show you what I mean by this tier. Right? Once you get cert, once you get characters level 85, once you take them further, you don't need those credits anymore. So like when you look at my account and we go by power, you look at all the characters and I don't even have every single character at level 85. But I've got the vast majority of them. I think I'm down to, I think it's like 29 or 30 characters who need to get to level 85 at this point. Yeah, 29. Because each grouping is 5. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 with Imperial Pro Droid already there. So 29 characters that I need to take to level 85. So it's not that many. And you look at some of them like Cup and Eeth Koth and, you know, Kit Fisto. Like some of this just is not going to be happening anytime soon. Tebow. Ewok Scout. So all of that said, credits, ability materials, once you spend them, you don't need them anymore. And so you just, you get to this point where it just doesn't matter. Let's, you know, just take a look at Ewok Scout here. Like you just have so many of these things, right? It just, yeah. Trust me, you'll get there and you'll get there sooner than you think too. You will, I promise. All right. Next tier that we need to look at is the core stability tier. Right now, when I say core stability, right, these are events are what drive your core gear and rewards on a weekly basis. Rewards are constant and add up over time. One of the big things you've got to think about is the stability of these rewards, right? Now, this tier will drop below the bonus tier eventually. I would 100% admit that, that this tier will drop below the bonus tier because the rewards in these do cap at a certain point, right? They do, they do cap at a certain point, but they're kind of core, right? They're very important to your growth. So you've got your gear challenges here, right? Where you get your carbonis and stun cuffs and stun guns, like these things, extremely important from that regard. You really, really want to be doing these challenges on a weekly basis. Again, as you grow, you'll hit a point where these don't become nearly as important, but I think for a long time, they're the stability of your account. Similar situation here with the uh, Zeta mat challenge and the ship credits. Because with ship credits, you'd say, oh, well, Phil, you don't need nearly as many of those. The counter argument I'd make here is you get like 300,000 ship credits at a time compared to like the bounty hunter event where you get the same amount. And ship credits go way, like are way more valuable than regular credits. Um, so you get far more value from this. And these you can use for mods and upgrading ships. I just, I feel like this one is still worth saying that this is part of your core stuff. Very much think it is. Um, these events again, again, this does drop below the bonus tier because you'll reach a point where you don't need, like, I don't have any more ships to upgrade. So now I just use these for mods and you know, that's happening as it does, but you know, they, they definitely drop below it. And then finally in here too, galactic challenges, these, this event galactic challenges is important because there's a lot of stuff in there that I don't think players realize. So I want to flip back over to the game, right? Kind of going back and forth here just to show, but with galactic challenges, the big thing here is now i'm obviously at tier 10 i should have done this before i got to you know the max crate but you look at you can get some core gear in here right you get some of this stuff you're getting some gear 13 gear not a lot but this is twice a week you get this twice a week so 
these rewards, again, on a weekly basis, kind of provide a constant flow of resources to your account. There's Kyrotex in here, Omicron materials, there's injector handles. Um, so it's very important. You've got even character shards, 30 character shards. This is 60 character shards a week. That's massive over the course of time. Like over a period of time, getting over 3,000 character shards, like it, it's a lot of stuff to get in here, guys. I'm telling you, galactic challenges are part of that core. They're what's going to keep your account stable. There's even you know mods and everything like these. I don't know that players recognize how important these events are in the grand scheme of your account. That you're looking at, if you can get the Kyrotex every single time, that's 10 Kyrotex a week, 52 weeks is 520 Kyrotex a year just from doing these events. Add on top of that, you know, the mods, it it's awesome, right? These are very, very important. I highly recommend that you try to do those as much as you can to the best of your abilities. So now, again, this will fall below that reward the like i recognize that assault battles will become far more important to you as time goes on now we get into the top end stability tier this is the bulk of your rewards these are the big events these are the big cojones these are where you will separate yourself with rewards so they're stable rewards the big thing here is stability all of these are stable rewards they're not going to differ greatly from event to event the biggest one that I would say differs from event to event would be your conquest because depending on whether you can do the conquest for Bane or whoever the next character is or like Trench and all those guys, depending on what your roster is, you might be able to do better or worse in a conquest. But over those three iterations of conquest, your rewards are going to be pretty consistent. And again, once you, as your account kind of gains a steady pace, what you'll find is that you'll probably be able to hit the same box relatively easily just through the pure size of your account so conquest again very important for that top end stability there's a lot of good rewards in there not only in terms of the character shards but the gear the mods things along the way really make a big difference there you know i have rise of the empire here but this is just territory battles in general territory battles offers exclusive rewards think of guild event currency one two, and most importantly, three, when you get, get into Rise of the Empire, you can't get those elsewhere, right? Outside of maybe like some other guild events. But I really think that Territory Battles also has a lot of good stuff in there in terms of like, you look at, you know, get two is the only way you can get Malevolence and Negotiator shards. So you can't afford to ignore Territory Battles. It's that top end stability. And then once you get Negotiator Malevolence, it's a great source of income for your Kyratex. So very much think you know those two right there hey top end stability like this is what's going to keep the top end of your roster progressing that you need the core stuff to get the characters to the point that we can take advantage of the rewards from these events here territory wars i almost put this i, I was struggling where to put this and i was like you know what territory wars especially the higher gp your guild gets is your is a great source of income of air magnifiers droid brains and zeta materials there's a, the zeta materials here is extremely valuable for players you remember you get two territory wars for every single territory battle so while tb gives you get three get two get one territory wars there's guild tokens there's some gear but the air magnifiers droid brains and zeta materials in my opinion are worth crazy resources that you don't that we don't always think about we don't always give it the credit and the other side of that is Hey, what if you win or lose? I'm taking into account that you're going to win 50% of your territory wars, that they're still just as important as territory battles, in my opinion. At least for the sake of this video, I have my own opinions on that. But again, um, for the sake of this, I put them in the same tier. I think they're both very important to keep the top end of your account stable. And then, of course, we've got the raid. And I have the speeder bike raid here, but I would argue this is all raids. All raids belong in this tier. Again, they're offering rewards that you need to progress the top end of your account. Like if your guild's still doing the challenge pit raid, that's because the top end of your account needs those resources. And as you progress and progress, you'll be able to get those rewards you need to keep the top end of your account stable, right? All these rewards kind of add up together to create the total effect of your progression. That You can't take full advantage of the speeder bike raid if you're not increasing your core, right? And the offset of some of these rewards in the bonus tiers is what's going to allow you to not have to purchase some things via raids or territory battles because you're getting them through other 
avenues. So again, all these rewards kind of adding up. Assault battles, that, that bonus tier will never move above this. This tier is still more important than all of those behind it, right? So like down here, the bonus rewards will fit in between your top end and your core, but it will never move above top end in my opinion. There's just too many good juicy rewards in here that are far more valuable. And then finally, we've got the Wampa tier, right? We've got Fleet Arena and Grand Arena. This should be no surprise. Listen, Fleet Arena is more important until you reach Kyber 5 and have a win-loss ratio of 5 to 4. So until you reach that point, getting first place in Fleet Arena is worth far more crystals to you. Crystals are the most important resource in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes because they're universal. You can use crystals for everything. Crystals drive so much of this game that you cannot pretend that they're not the most important resource. Just when you think about it, right? Crystals are what we use to refresh energy. You can use your crystals to buy character shards, signal data. I mean, you can even use them to purchase your light side, you know, light side, dark side tickets for Galactic Legends. The crystals drive so much of this game that any game mode that offers crystals immediately gains significance. And particularly for the sake of those where you're looking at that like territory or for Grand Arena and Fleet Arena, extremely important that we hammer these things and get as many crystals as we can to spend in the game modes and increase our rewards elsewhere um again guys i really think that these two just incredibly important i cannot preach enough how much those crystals will make a difference in your account at every stage of this game you know arnold all these guys you know if you're now if you're spending crystals like it normally doesn't you know if you're like wailing out like your fleet arena isn't important but you got to think 400 crystals a day every single day is huge right that's almost a full vault every single month just from playing fleet arena so all of that said guys let me know your thoughts again this will be linked down below if you're still watching right now go ahead and say wampa is king you guys know the drill wampa is king this time i love all you may the force be with you and i'll see you in the next video cheers